COVID-19, uh, trying to do a do an operation, trying to trying to do expeditionary operations at reach on a sustained footing is very difficult without COVID-19. Now you overlay the complexities of logistical support, maintaining uh, all, all the support networks and nodes that one needs to, to keep just one ship at reach, but a whole strike overlaid with COVID-19 has been hugely challenging. I'm really proud of how HMS Richmond, the strike group, but, but my sailors in particular, and my ship's company, my crew, my officers and sailors, how they have demonstrated resilience in the face of COVID-19. We have visited a number of countries where we haven't been given access to sometimes even the jetty. Um, we've arrived in India, we've been made to feel blisteringly welcome. Uh, my sailors have gone ashore into the region of Goa uh, and had a wonderful time. And so this is the first time in a long time actually, in about three months, that I've been able to let my sailors step off the ship. Uh, and so I'm very grateful for to India for, for allowing that to happen. But to answer your original question, it's been very challenging. But in which countries did you face these sort of restrictions where you weren't even allowed access to the jetty? So the further east we went, the, 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 the more nervous I think it's fair to say that, that nations were. And we respect the, 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 the in-country policies. That's entirely, um, you know, they're, 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 that's their freedom of choice. Um, we respect that. What we were able to do was engage with those countries through Zoom and through uh, other other sort of um, technical means. I, I, I like to think that we had a really powerful impact despite the challenges of COVID-19. The, the, the Royal Navy still arrived, has still been able to engage with, with the communities um, and, and hopefully have some form of reassurance to those nations that despite COVID-19 and despite the inability to access their country, we're still here as reliable and committed to their, to their regions as, as well. The design of the exercise is still being worked through actually. My, my warfare officers at the moment are, are working closely with the Indian Navy to sort of finalise the plans. Um, but essentially, um, the mission will be to, um, to mission success will be um, ultimately getting a, a, a constructed kill on, on the aircraft. Aircraft, yeah. Um, and how we achieve that will be um, I'll choose my words carefully. Professionally challenging and very rewarding if we can get it right. And could you just tell us a little bit about the history of HMS Richmond? Yeah, of course. So HMS Richmond, uh, she's 26 years old now. Um, and she had a whole new uh, refit three years ago. So when I joined the ship with, uh, with the crew, uh, she was like a, a, an engineering project. And we'd put new engines in. And those engines are going to be part of Type 26 and Type 31, our new frigates. So what we're doing is essentially this is a test bed, a test platform, with its new engines, new propulsion system, new software that controls the, the new propulsion system. Um, and so it, it's, I think it's quite a novel, a novel thing that we've done here. We've, we've put a new, a new bit of exquisite technology into an older platform because it still works very well, all the weapons and sensors are still completely up to date and modern, and the hull is structurally sound. So what we've done is we've proven this new system, so when we build uh, HMS Glasgow, and, and then all the sister ships that roll out thereafter, we've got a proven system. So that's 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 one thing, but HMS Richmond, as I say, has been, been uh, around for, for 26 years, and she's got a, a, a proud history um, of, of transiting around the high seas, um, and it's a real privilege to come on. Balances that you're keeping that once your crew comes from a shore leave or a shore visit, are they subjected to tests? Do they have to do mandatory COVID testing before you, you, yes. you sail out? Uh, absolutely. We've got more lateral flow tests on this ship than, than I've got weapons. Um, I'm joking. We have a lot of lateral flow tests. We've become very versed in managing ourselves. We're all, the whole crew are double vaccinated. Um, and we test randomly and, and we test regularly um, and certainly once we've been ashore we will now test on, on a more stringent basis and the longer we spend at sea the less we start to test and that makes sense yeah yeah because yeah. yeah. you're naturally quarantined all the time. well this yeah we've I, I i mean i don't i'm no scientist but um we haven't had an outbreak of covid on the ship so since we've deployed um, do we have herd immunity i don't know 
what is this exercise all about? Uh, HMS Richmond had come to India and uh, exercise, uh, have some joint exercise with the Indian Navy. So, can you tell us about it? Yes, certainly I can. So, HMS Richmond is part of a wider carrier strike group, HMS Queen Elizabeth. Um, and, and a multitude of other ships have, uh, have been on the deployment. We set sail from the United Kingdom on the 1st of May, uh, and we've gone all the way through the Mediterranean, across the Indian Ocean, out into the, uh, into the South China Seas, into the Pacific Ocean, and now we're on our way back again. We did a, a, a joined up, very quick, but joined up exercise with the Indian Navy on our way out, and now we're on our way back. Uh, we're stopping and we're taking part in Exercise CONCAN, which is which is a, a, a big Indian exercise, and the Royal Navy is privileged to be part of that exercise. HMS Queen Elizabeth, uh, the, the Dutch ship, uh, the Evertsen, and HMS Defender are joining the Indian Navy to, to be part of the Blue Forces, and HMS Richmond, along with two or three other Indian ships, are playing the opposition, known as Red Forces. I like playing the opposition, it's always quite good fun. So I'm looking forward to working with my Indian colleagues in, uh, in, in exercising over the next three days. So it's, it's a three, three and a half day exercise. Actually uh, focus on this region, the Indo-Pacific region. So I think it comes back to, I was talking about reassuring the seafaring community, making sure that the sea lanes of communication are, are, are reassured, they're safe places, and that people have the freedom of choice um, to, to navigate the high seas as, as they see fit. The United Kingdom, is leaning towards the Indo-Pacific region, uh, demonstrated by the by the very presence of HMS Richmond and Queen Elizabeth here in, in India at the moment. But um, the United Kingdom didn't need to send their fifth generation aircraft carrier into the Indo-Pacific. We could have sent it to the high north, we could have sent it anywhere in the world, but we chose to send it uh, to, to, to Southeast Asia um, and, and come and exercise and reassure this, this part of the world and these communities that UK is reliable and credible and, um, and, and, and we're here to be, to be relied upon. I think. So can it be concluded that there'll be more such deployments in the coming future? I, I sincerely hope so. I think it's a really important policy, part of global Britain. If we don't recognise that the seascape of Southeast Asia, Indo-Pacific, is so important, as I said, demonstrated by the very presence of Queen Elizabeth, but also by HMS Tamar and Spey, permanent presence of, of four deployed vessels out here. I think that shows hopefully uh, the UK's commitment to this region. How was those silly? So I think um, supporting and reinforcing the United Nations Convention for Law of the Sea is fundamentally what, what we all subscribe to as the international rules-based community. Uh, and what HMS Richmond alongside the Carrier Strike Group did was demonstrate our, our, our exercising our rights under UNCLOS and it's, I think it's incredibly important we do that. All really to reaffirm and reassure the seafaring community that the sea lanes of communication are policed and they're safe, they're, it's, it's safe for all mariners of all, of all nations to, uh, to proceed across the high seas uninhibited. Uh, two things were there. One was that you sailed through the Taiwan uh, route and another was North Korea. You have also th this uh, HMS Richmond had also monitoring the uh, violation of UN sanction for North Korea point of view. So can you tell us about that? Yeah, well, well done for doing your research. That's absolutely right. We were doing United Nations Security Council resolution operations um, against the proliferation of, uh, of nuclear weapons in North Korea. And part of that is, uh, is an exportation and importation of, of fuels, sanctions. And HMS Richmond took part for a short but, but important period of part of, that, of part of that wider mission. Again, a real privilege to be taking part in the United Nations mission. Um, and yeah, and we, 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 we had some success on that operation. In terms of exercising our rights to navigate upon the high seas uh, un unhindered, we absolutely uh, we, we exercise that right alongside other partner nations who also uh, demonstrate their um, their commitment to UNCLOS. And so yes, HMS Richmond did transit the Taiwan Straits um, under our, our privilege of operating on the high seas. You have a forward in the combating the common uh, enemies. Yes, so I think that's a good question. I think um, partnerships are really important. Uh, and the Royal Navy and the Indian Navy have a, a very strong, close relationship. 
Um, it was demonstrated on our way through the area we, we, where we exercised with the Indian Navy and again on the way back. And it's We've spent a lot of time uh, with the Indian Navy, more so than, than other navies actually, while we've been in this region. And the Royal Navy, along with the United Kingdom, is tilting back to the Indo-Pacific region. We're sort of recommitting uh, time and energy and resource. We're forward deploying a permanent presence uh, in the Indo-Pacific region with HMS Tamar and Spey are going to be permanently forward deployed uh, ships in, in the region. So whilst this is a big exercise, um, and it's exciting and HMS Queen Elizabeth is here, we're, we're, we want to be a reliable and consistent presence in this area. As you 